Hi. In this video, I hope to explain a little bit more about what is going on when you burn wood with electricity. I'm going to attempt to explain this to the best of my ability, but I don't understand it fully and I'm probably going to mess a lot of things up. So please feel free to correct me in the comments below if you have any insight or if I said anything wrong. Let's get into it. Wood is typically not conductive, and that also goes for pure water, distilled water. But most water that you come in contact with is able to conduct electricity. And that's because that water, the water you have around you, the tap water, you know, sea water, all those waters, water in a river, they all have minerals dissolved into it. So that means that those, those minerals are essentially charged particles in the water called ions. Some are negative, some are positive. So when we're making an electrolyte, what we're doing is we're dissolving a, an ionic compound like sodium chloride into the water. And when, those, when that ionic compound dissolves into the water, it, uh, the ions, the two different ions, one positive, one negative, can move around freely in the water and can uh, carry current essentially. We're taking the wood, which will not conduct electricity, and we're soaking it with an electrolyte solution. So now there's a, a film of current conducting liquid on the wood. And essentially what's happening is you put the two electrodes on that, that film and apply a current through it, and you see that the uh, electricity is going in many different paths. It's going in all the paths that it can. There will be more current on the path of least resistance, but it's taking all the paths that it can. And I learned a lot from Alpha Phoenix's video about electricity. Actually, there are a lot of videos. Um, I'll post a link to the one I'm talking about in the description. It's a misconception to think that electricity always follows the path of least resistance. It actually follows all paths in proportion to their resistance. So if there's a path that has very low resistance, it's going to follow that one with more current. So essentially what's happening when the current's applied to the wood with the electrolyte on it is the current is going in all those different paths. And as the current is going through the electrolyte, it's getting really hot and it's burning the wood. And as it burns the wood, the, uh, the wood is turning into charcoal and that charcoal is now conductive. So now the wood is conductive. So it's kind of like a, a feedback loop where the current is flowing through the electrolyte in all these different paths. The paths that have less resistance, there's more current. And in those paths, the, uh, the electricity burns the wood more, creating more charcoal, creating an actual conductive pa uh, path in the wood and this just keeps happening until the two paths from the two electrodes meet and that has absolutely least resistance possible through the wood. And so the current just flows through there and you can see that in the burning that when the two paths actually connect then it just, you know, everything's just flowing through there and they don't take any more paths anymore. What also could happen is the current heats up the electrolyte so much that all the water boils off and now none of those ions are in solution, they precipitate out. Uh, the precipitates, precipitates don't carry the current. So that's what you see sometimes. Sometimes there's not enough electrolyte or enough solution, electrolyte solution, and the water just boils off and there's no more current being carried through and it just fizzles out. Other times you hold the electrodes all the way until the, uh, there's a direct path connecting of charcoal in the wood connecting the two electrodes and it just <laughs> arcs out. And um, we'll see in some of the videos that I'm going to show here, we'll see the, the current kind of or the electricity arcing off of one part of the electrolyte to another. And I'm not entirely sure what's happening there, but you see as it arcs, it's vaporizing the air and turning the air into plasma. And a lot of what you're seeing, the arcing and the, the uh, really bright lights is the, the electricity 
heating the uh, heat, heating molecules up in its path so much that it turns into a, a plasma or an ionized gas. But this one was especially interesting, potassium hydroxide. And um, this one had a lot of arcing. It's, it's, uh, and I, there's so many things happening here. There is, for one, the wood. I tried using an engineered product. I mean, I did use an engineered product, hoping that the wood would be as consistent as possible. But still, I mean, even in plywood, it's, it's peels of, of logs that are glued together. So not only do you have the glue, which has an effect, you have all these different layers. They're going different directions. So in, the, in this case, you know, you have a thin veneer of maple wood, and then you have these other types of wood underneath. And most of the burning is happening underneath that veneer. That veneer burns off in no time at all. So there's a lot going on in there. There's, you know, different densities of wood, different, you know, the, the wood grows. It's an organic product and it grows and however it wants to. And there's no consistency in density in here as much as I tried. So that's going to have a, a lot to do with how the electrolyte soaks up, where it soaks up, the con, you know the consistencies and all of that, and then another factor is how much electrolyte I put on there. You know, I just kind of dumped this on. These things were kind of on a on a, a bumpy surface on a slope. It wasn't really absorbed everywhere. You know, like to get equal absorption everywhere would be uh, a bit of a challenge. And I haven't actually really tried to do that. The best scenario I've had so far is using a spray bottle and just spraying the electrolyte over here and it just that gets a, a much more even uh, distribution of the electrolyte and when I'm burning like a, a bigger project I will spray the the project numerous times it wood has varying densities if you're using solid wood it's gonna have varying densities all over the wood depending on you know what slice of the wood it is how the woods cut whether it's rift sawn or flat sawn or quarter sawn and so on and so forth, you know, those are going to have varying degrees of density. And even if you have all boards from the same tree that are all sawn the exact same way, all dried the same way, you still have the different sections of the wood, the early wood and the late wood, where the wood is different. That's how you see the, that's where the rings are in the wood and you see the, the different densities of wood from, um, from when it's growing in the, in the summer versus the winter. So, it, you know, it's not a consistent product. Um, would be interesting to see some of this wood burning on uh, a more consistent product. I've definitely done it on MDF before. And to be honest, it has pretty similar results. Um, it, it, you know, and the thing is, is that when you use MDF, uh, it, it doesn't deal with liquids very well. So when you soak MDF with an electrolyte, it kind of does some some things that you don't really want it to do. It swells up and, and, and all sorts of things like that. So uh, don't really recommend using that. I mean, it's good for an experiment, I, I suppose. But um, in the next video, I'm going to burn a bunch of different species of wood. I'm gonna just use some offcuts of what I have. I'm gonna to try to burn some pressure treated wood and see what that's like, some painted wood as well. And i um, also going to see if I can burn some bone and uh, maybe a steak. I don't know. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening.